Dana KY is the decluttering queen, but if you want to know her process without reading all of her books, then you are in the right place. Hey friends, I'm Terry, and today I am going to be decluttering like Dana K. White. And so put your earbuds in and let's declutter together. So we need to pick a room. I'm going to be working in this closet and we're going to need a trash bag and also a donation box because we are not going to make a mess with Dana K. White. We're going to just deal with one thing at a time and get it done. After reading her books and listening to her podcast, I know that Dana K. White works and it works for busy moms and messy moms. So normally I would pull all of this out and basically make a disaster of the other room trying to sort things out into keep and donate and you know trying to organize it all before I put it all back in. But with Dana K. White we're going to do things differently and that's the beauty of her system. So the first step was just getting the trash, the obvious trash, and I can't even get to the back of this closet yet so I know there's more trash. But I got the trash that I could easily grab from where I'm standing without moving everything. Now we're going to move on to the next step. Now that the trash is completely out of here, we're just moving on to the things that are easy. So these are the things that you already know don't belong in this closet. They were just tossed here recently. So for example, I've got some camping gear that just got thrown in the floor. Now camping gear has its own section in our garage, but for whatever reason, it's in the closet. So I'm going to just take it right now and go put it away. So as I continue to find things that belong in other areas, I'm also going to be picking out anything that's what she calls a duh donation. Duh donations would be anything that you 100% never really liked, you've outgrown, you definitely don't plan on ever needing again. Those can easily be put in the donation box. No stress, no mess, just pick it up, put it away, and keep on moving. So what I'm noticing is we have a lot of empty boxes and this comes because I married into a family that keeps everything and so every toy they've ever owned every shirt they've ever gotten they just have a very hard time letting go of things and that makes my job as you know the decluttering person so much harder because you should never donate someone else's stuff so I'm just kind of relocating the things that they need to make decisions on I'm gonna give them a set amount of space that they can fill with however they want to fill it now because this closet is multi-purpose and it had a lot of stuff in there I had to take a pause because my trash bag had already gotten filled up and I have a huge stack of more trash so I am just in the process of bringing all the trash out all the old you know gift wrap bags and all those things I'm just I'm wiping it clean we're just gonna start over because they're in bad repair they are sticking together like it's just not worth the effort to try to salvage them when I can go to the Dollar Tree at Christmas and spend a few bucks and get all new stuff so those things are all gonna go this huge pile here is my donate pile so far so it's a pretty good stack and then I have a bin here that all of the photos and the sentimental things, I'm just putting it in one place so that I can get it out of the way, vacuum the closet out, and then I'm going to get them organized into a bin that's a little bit safer for each picture so we're not ruining anything because these are old pictures that we just got from the passing of one of our parents. So it's not something we're ready to deal with now. If you need to stop and take a water break, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna haul off this trash and then we're gonna move on to step four. So with the rest of the clutter, Dana says to ask two questions. The first question is, where would I look for this if I needed it? Don't put it off, don't make a pile, take it and put it in that area. So we're gonna take these right now and go ahead and put them exactly where I need them to be. So these are some toys that I know that my grandbaby will love. So I'm gonna bring them down here, throw them in the dishwasher, get them cleaned up, put them in his toy box. The second question is, if I needed this item, would it occur to me to remember that I already have one? And that's the funny, that no one was looking for this. And so what I found is as I got deeper and deeper in this clutter, I realized more and more of this stuff is just random stuff. For example, my son was pulling out empty boxes from Game Boys and, you know, computer parts and things like that. And we kept the boxes because there are those extra parts in there. The problem is, is that odds are we don't even have that thing anymore, number one. Number two, if 
I was in town and I needed that part, would I remember that I have one of those in the box that I haven't seen in years? And the odds are no, I would not remember that it came with an extra part. And so that is taking up some valuable space. And if you think of it like paying rent on your space, because we are, you pay a mortgage for a certain amount of square footage. And so if you break down the square footage and you're paying 50, 150, whatever it comes out to, the square footage of your house divided by the cost of your house, that is your square footage. And then look and see, does this two dollar you know allen wrench deserve to take a space in my house because it was inside of a box that was a big box and the only piece of equipment that was in there was the allen wrench and some extra screws and i've been paying rent or storage fees on this stupid little thing because i thought i might need it and never did and if i did need it I never thought to go looking for it. I just went to Lowe's. So that has been quite the process. So if this has been helpful and got you motivated to maybe tackle some of your projects, go ahead and give me a like and show a little bit of love. So Dana also says never ever make stacks. Take one item, deal with the one item and move on. That is probably the hardest of all the rules because where I'm located, this closet is upstairs in a back area of the house and going up and down the stairs definitely was giving me a workout. But as I was decluttering, I was getting more and more trash and more and more donations. I did not have the room inside of the closet for the big, huge pile of donations and I didn't have a box big enough. So let me show you the hot mess that my room turned into. But the good news is, is that it is two piles. It is donations and it is trash. All right, so here we go. So this is the view from the outside of my closet. This stack is my donation area. So all of this is going to the donation bin. I've just got to get it down to the car and I've already started that process until it got too crowded and I was having a hard time getting through. This huge stack is all of the empty boxes and trash that all just needs to be taken and broken down and taken to the dump so that it is out of here. So huge stack of trash, stack of donations. Everything in there is donation. This huge thing is donation. <sighs> we know that it's a pretty good size closet and there's no reason. There's no reason that we can't be organized in here. The last step with Dana K. White is to make it fit. So when you take things into these other areas, you absolutely have to be able to fit that extra item into that zone. So in this room, what I decided was things like belts. You know, this is the container that I have chosen for his belt. So he had to go through and pick only the belts that would fit inside of here. Any belts that would not fit, they need to be donated. And I've got a complete video on exactly how to do the container concept so that you will not feel like you are struggling to make these decisions. And remember, we could not even walk in here. And now we have all, this could be a spare bedroom. It is so large, not even joking. So until next time, let's pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the progress we made in our homes today and the motivation to get it all done. Father, I just pray that you will just give us the energy and the enthusiasm and the patience to deal with all of these things, especially if they're not your things. Father, God, we give you honor, glory, and praise in all things. Amen. Bye, guys. I will see y'all on the next one.